Hello, welcome to another Table in the Wilderness. I'm Steve. Pull up a chair and join me as I share God's Word. A couple brief announcements before I get started. I'm sure you heard that. We are near hunting season. Hunting season will start here in Wisconsin in about one week. I am about one mile from a rifle range behind me, so you will probably hear throughout this message, throughout this video, rifle shooting behind me. I am safe, we're all good, but just want you to be aware you will be hearing these sounds. The second thing I want to announce, if you're new, maybe you don't know this, I don't do Table in the Wilderness videos all winter long, all year long. So it's getting, coming to that season, it's getting cold, it's I think 50 degrees, about 40, 50 degrees, somewhere between 45 and 50. Not too bad. I'll be okay. I did leave my gloves home, but I'm actually quite warm, so I think I'll be fine. But winter is coming upon us, and I won't be sitting in the woods doing these videos. I will continue to do my walk in the spirit videos all year long, and if I need to do a teaching video, I will do one at home, just a teaching video from my home. Well, that's all announcements. I just want to share this video today. We're going to be talking about escaping judgment. Now, in a previous video, I talked about a coming judgment in America. And you can see my video here, A Walk in the Spirit, Will America Be Great Again? That was Ju July 20th, 2024, if you want to watch that in detail. But we'll talk a little about that here today. And I discussed the scripture in 1 John 5, 16. We're going to read that and talk a little bit about it. If anyone sees his brother sin a sin, not to death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for those who do not sin to death. There is a sin to death. And I do not say that he shall pray for it. So my stance is that America has been such, such sins that their judgment has to come. And I believe, I believe all the world, I'm not going to say judgment is only on America. Many nations will cease to exist or will fall into very low numbers. And I believe America is going to such judgment. And now I did find a brother in the Lord who I do link to every once in a while, not often. And you might go to my homepage on YouTube and I have a list of channels I recommend. And one of the channels I recommend is John Barnett. And he did a video, you can find it here, Sin Unto Death, God Chastening and Believers Who Refuse to Repent. Check out that video if you want to know more about this Sin Unto Death. So I believe there are three things and maybe more that I believe God is upset with America about, and those are the reasons I believe judgment has to come. The first is in June 25th, 1962, America made it against the law for prayers to be made in school. Now those are corporate prayers. The teachers can't lead the children into prayer. That is not allowed anymore, but children can meet together, teenagers, whoever. They can get together by themselves and pray. That's fine. But because America has chosen to make it illegal for adult prayer with the students, I believe there is judgment on America for that. Again, that was June 25th, 1962. And another judgment I want to speak about is for the sin from June 17th, 1963, where they outlawed Bible and Bible reading in school. Again, once the details, if you want to dig into them, you can find out that yes, students can pray, pray and they can also read the Bible, but teachers and uh, the faculty of schools cannot read and teach the Bible. I believe God will judge America for that. Again, that was in June 17th, 1963. And the last one was January 22. This is a big one, folks. In 1973, abortion was made legal, and that is Roe versus Wade. Now, I believe you can go into the law and study this and all the details because I don't know all the information and facts. I do believe the Roe v. Wade has been turned, but many states, see America put it towards the states, and many states are still outlawing um, or allowing abortion to be legal and they allow it to kill those babies and that judgment is still coming. Maybe Trump will change that, we don't know, but they killed a lot of uh, American babies and God hates this sin. Judgment has to come. Again, you can dig into this more yourself and you can see the previous video or you can see John Barnett's video. He doesn't talk about these specific issues, but he talks about sin unto death, that sometimes people will sin such sins or nations will sin such sins. Judgment has to come. 
We're going to talk about escaping judgment. I'm going to start with one scripture in Revelation 3.10. This is a really good uh, pre-tribulation rapture scripture, one of the best, I think. Revelation 3.10, Because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which will come upon all the habitable world to try those who dwell on the earth. Now, I did a whole video on this. If you're going to see my deep dive into that verse, go into a lot of detail of it. You can find it here. It is a pre-trib rapture according to Revelation 3.10. But quickly, let's read it again. Because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation, which will come upon all the habitable world to try those who, are dwelling, who will dwell upon the earth. There is a judgment coming upon this world, a tribulation. That will happen in the future, near future, I believe, after the rapture. How soon after the rapture? I don't know. It could be the same day. It could be an hour later. It could be days later. It could be weeks later, months later. Even some people say months later or years later. I think it'll be months after the rapture. Of course, no one knows the day or hour except the Lord. But the, the tribulation will come after the rapture. And this judgment will fall upon this world, again, America and many other nations, upon the whole world will find this judgment and anger of God. But God is going to redeem his people and those who are in Christ. He will pull them up into heaven and they will live in live with Christ and God will judge them. There's a scripture, I think it's in Peter. I'll put it on the screen. I don't have it. That the judgment first begins in the house of God. So while God is going to judge the earth, judgment has to begin with us. He's going to pull us up and he will judge us. And I have other videos on it. You can see a video below. Uh, in the description, it is the Bema Seat Judgment. You can check out that video. I'll put the name of it here, but I'll link to it in the description. I'm not going to spend this whole video talking about a pre-tribulation rapture, but I'm going to give a couple more scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So those of us in Christ, we're going to skip these judgments again. There will be judgment on every Christian, mostly for rewards. See my other videos. But there is a judgment on this world, and we who are in Christ will skip that judgment. Here's another amazing scripture, Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore, praying in every season that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things which shall occur and to stand before the Son of Man. Praise God. We have an ability to escape these judgments if you are in Christ. Now let's take a look at a specific situation about Abraham and Lot. And we're going to talk about how God mercifully saved Lot from judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to read this story out of Genesis chapter 18. This will be a long scripture, folks, but let's get through this. We'll read Genesis 18, 1. Through 33, we'll be skipping a few of those verses, though. Starting in verse 1. And the Lord appeared to him, that's Abraham, in the plains of Amri. And he sat at the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And lo, three men stood before him. And he saw them, and he ran to beat them from the tent door. And he bowed toward the ground. And he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, do not pass away, I pray, from your servant. Let a little water, I pray, be brought, and wash your feet, and rest under the tree. And he took butter and milk, and the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they ate. And the men rose up from there, and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham was going with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I am to do? And Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the persons of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his sons and his house after him, and he shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down and see whether that they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come to me. And if not, I will know. And then the men turned their faces away from there, and they went toward Sodom. 
But Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Will you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Perhaps there are fifty righteous within the city, and you will will you also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are in, in it? Far be it from you to act in this manner, to kill the righteous and the wicked. And far be it from you that the righteous should be as the wicked. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak to the Lord. Who am I but dust and ashes? Perhaps will there be five lacking from the fifty righteous? Will you destroy the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty-five, I will not destroy it. And he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry, and I will speak only once more. Perhaps ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left on speaking with Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. We'll continue this story. We're going to go to Genesis 19. We're going to read verses 1 through 26. Once again, skipping many of the verses. Verse 1. And then came two angels to Sodom at evening, and Lot sat at the gate of Sodom. And Lot rose up to meet them when he saw them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and stay all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go your way. And they said, No, but we will stay in the street. But he urgently pressed on, pressed on them, and they turned into him, and entered into his house. And he made a feast, and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. And the men said to Lot, Have you anyone besides yourself? Bring your sons-in-law, your sons, and your daughters, and whatever you have in the city. Bring them out of this place. For I will destroy this place, because great is the cry of them before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spoke with his sons-in-law, who married his daughters, and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as the one who mocked his sons-in-law. And when the dawn rose up, the angels hurried Lot, saying, Rise up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And he lingered. The angel laid upon him his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him forth, and set him outside the city. And it happened as they brought him outside, he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be consumed. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, fire and brimstone, and the Lord out of the heavens. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire, from the Lord out of the heavens. And he overthrew those cities, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of those cities, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. All right, let's talk about this. You see, Lot, while he was righteous because he followed the God of Abraham, he did have wickedness in his heart. Let's give an example of this in Genesis 12, 8 through 11. And Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray you, between me and you, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are men, brothers. Is not the whole land before you? I pray, separate yourself from me. If you go to the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the circuit of Jordan. And it was well watered before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like a garden of the Lord and the land of Egypt as you come to Zor. And Lot chose all the circuit of Jordan for himself. And Lot journeyed east and they separated themselves from one another. So the land couldn't hold all of Abraham and Lot's, their, all their sheeps and herds, they had to separate them and they were getting 
fighting and in, in fighting between their shepherds. So he decided they Abraham said, I gotta separate to have this peace. Let there not be anger between us. Let us not fight. You just choose where you want to go and I'll go another way. And Lot lost it all the glorious fruit of the land where Sodom and Gomorrah went. God cho God chose Abraham to bless him, no matter what he chose and what he did. But Lot was not satisfied with the blessing of the Lord. Lot chose the best of the land and wanted to live there. His lusts, not the will of God. Well, what about his wife? Let's read this verse again. This is Genesis 19, 17, and 26. And happened when they brought him outside, he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you. This is what Lot's wife did. Verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Now the Lord speaks about this, failing to follow God and looking towards the world. We see this in Luke chapter 9, verse 61 and 62. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but first allow me to take leave of those in my house. And Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Do you want to escape this judgment? Then you can't be like Lot's wife. If you're looking back at your sins, and living in the sins of your past and not pursuing Christ and walking in Christ and newness of life, you're going to fall in judgment. You're not going to make it out of Sodom and Gomorrah. You're not going to make it out of this earth at the rapture. We have other scriptures on this. Let's look at Revelation chapter 2. We're going to read 18 through 23. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, The Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like burnished metal, says these things. So this is to the church. He has eyes to see our hearts, to see the desire of our heart, what we want, what we're searching for, what we're looking for, and what we're walking in. Verse 20. But I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel to teach. She's saying herself to be a prophetess and to cause my servants to go astray and to commit fornication and to eat idle sacrifices. And I gave her time that she might repent of her fornication, and she did not repent. Behold, I'm throwing her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into great affliction. This is the, this is the tribulation, folks. Unless they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death, and all the churches will know that I am he who searches the reins and hearts, and I will give to every one of you according to your works. So here he is, Jesus is saying to the church, if you are participating in this sins of Jezebel, and I have videos on this, okay? If you're walking in unrighteousness with this world, you're going to be condemned with this world and you will suffer the tribulation. He speaks more on this in Matthew chapter 24, we read verse 45 through 51. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord will find him doing so when he comes. Truly I say to you, he shall make him rule over all his goods. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delays his coming, and shall begin to strike his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he does not look for him, in an hour he does not know, and he shall cut him apart and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So if you're not following Christ, if you're not looking for Christ, if you're not living for Christ, and you're speaking and working against the brothers in the Lord, against the church, and you're living in sin, your appointment is with the hypocrites. You're not going to get raptured. Verse 51, one more time. And he shall cut him apart and appoint his, his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And let's look again at Revelation 2.22. 
Don't walk in this, folks. Don't walk in this. Behold, I'm throwing her into a bed and those who commit adultery with her into great affliction unless they repent of their deeds. And of course, we have the parable of the ten virgins. I'm only going to read about half of it, but let's look at this. Matthew 25, we read 8 through 13. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. And the wise answered, saying, No, lest there not be enough for you and for us, but rather go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they who were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered and said, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore watch, for you do not know either the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man comes. So in this parable, we learn there's two things. They don't have extra oil. You have to have extra oil. I have other videos on it. Matter of fact, I'll find a one right here. This is another video I recommend. It's a table in the wilderness, parable of the ten virgins, and the extra oil. Check out that video for more understanding what the extra oil is. But also, he didn't know them. They didn't know him. They might believe in him. Again, I preach this all the time. You have to know the difference between believing and being born again. Believing that Jesus died for your sins it will save you. But if you're not walking in new life, walking in Christ, knowing him, you're not going to get raptured, folks. Please see these other videos. In a recent video, I talked about the sheep and goat judgment. And you can see that video here. It's a table in this Jerusalem, a burdensome stone. And you can go to like the 13 minute mark and watch it from there. You see, Jesus is going to judge after, after the rapture. We're going to be in, in heaven for seven years. And he's going to come back down and he's going to judge those who are still living on the earth. He's going to separate them into two groups, the sheep and the goats. Now there, are, I got, again, see that video from where I describe these judgments. Now there are some nations who he will judge and condemn. If there is a nation, let's give an example, let's say Great Britain, as a poor example. Let's, let's say there's a nation like Great Britain, but I think they're, they're not going to be one who, who's going to be judged such a way. Let's say there is a nation like Great Britain. They condemned Israel. They did not help Israel. They hurt Israel. That nation, whichever came against Israel and did not help them, they will cease to exist in the thousand year reign of Christ. But let's say there are Christians in that nation. Let's say it's Great Britain. Now again, I don't believe Great Britain does these things. Hopefully they are walking in favor of the Jews and helping the Jews. Let's say there are Christians who survived the tribulation and are there also. They are the sheep. Just because their nation was destroyed and ended, these Christians who are in that nation, or whatever nation that he will judge, that they will also suffer that judgment. They will be given, they will have to enter into another nation or live in the land of Israel itself. Because the Bible does talk about there will be a place in the new rebuilt Jerusalem, not new Jerusalem, but rebuilt Jerusalem here on this physical earth, that there will be a place for the Gentiles who live there. And they will get to rule and reign with Christ and live on the, in the thousand year reign of Christ and enter into the thousand year reign and get his blessings. So just because you are in a nation that will be judged against that nation and be destroyed from the earth, doesn't mean you will receive that judgment as well. God's going to separate the sheep from the goats. And he's also going to separate those who are the carnal Christians, the unfaithful, wicked Christians, from the faithful Christians. I have a video on the evil servant. Uh, you can see it down in the description. I don't think I have room for it here. You can check that video where I discuss more in detail who these evil servants are in greater depth of understanding. Well, that's it, folks. I know a lot of this isn't new, but I thought it was remarkable. Someone else preached this to me recently. I don't remember where on YouTube, but someone preached and reminded me that God, he might save Lot, but he didn't save Lot's wife. And I don't want to share that, that there is hope. If you are a Christian and you are following 
and fumbling with lusts of this world, but you're trying to work in Christ and try to follow a blessing of God's will, I think you're going to be okay like Lot. He wasn't the greatest man of the world, but Lot was saved from Sodom and Gomorrah. Search for Christ. Look for Christ. Walk in as best as you can. When you sin, repent. But don't look back like Lot's wife. Don't pursue the things that you turned away from when you became a Christian. Walk in newness of life. We will stumble, we'll fall. God understands. But don't walk in it. Don't walk in sin. Repent of your sin and pursue Him and new life in Christ. Well, that's it, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you're new, uh, please subscribe and please hit like if you enjoyed it. And once again, this will probably be my last Table in the Wilderness this year. If it warms up, I might do another one, no promises, but if there are going to be more teachings, most likely I will teach from in my house. God bless, folks. We'll see you soon, Lord willing, if we're not raptured, if I'm not censored. God bless, folks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.